Synthesis questions from exam one fell into two categories, most likely. Stuff that involved benzenes and stuff that involved Diels other reactions. So let's start with benzene and talk about the usual reactions you have to deal with. Now some of these may be provided to you on your answer key, but I don't know because I haven't seen it yet. So we have a bunch of different reactions that add things to benzene. Let's see what we have. Well, we have Br2 with FeBr3. And the bromine is replaceable with any other halogen. So for example, I could do Cl2 with Cl, uh, uh, FeCl3. And all this does is it adds a bromine or whatever halogen is on the arrow to your benzene. So for example, you have the bromine here. Now there is nothing on this benzene, which means that bromine can get added to any of these carbons and it would be the same thing. But we'll see in a couple minutes that there are some particulars where, for where things get added. But if you start with a benzene with nothing on it, what gets added to that benzene can go anywhere on any of the carbons of the benzene. The next reaction you should know that involves benzene is HNO3 with H2SO4. And that reaction adds an NO2 to the benzene. For the first exam, this reaction wasn't too important because all it did was add an NO2. But we saw for the third exam, this NO2 could become a lot of different things with a couple extra steps. But for now, we're just going to talk about exam one benzene syntheses. So all it does for our purposes is it adds an NO2. The next reaction, I'm going to talk about in a little more detail. So these two are kind of generic. They're the ones that are easy. You don't need to know any particulars about them. They just add what they add. But this next one is kind of important to know because it does some weird things. And it is where you have a benzene and you add a carbon chain with a leaving group on it, like chlorine, and then you see AlCl3. Now, if this were a synthesis problem and you were free to choose what you wanted to add to the benzene, I would say don't use this reaction because it has a very important um, kind of intermediate that happens. When, what this AlCl3 does is it's, an, it's called a Lewis acid, and all it does is it ends up pulling off the chlorine, and what that does is it leaves a carbocation on the carbon over there. And now these carbocations that you form through this step are always able to do carbocation shifts, and this carbocation will almost instantly look to move to a more stable position. Right now it's on a primary carbon, but right next door is a secondary carbon. And what will happen is something called a hydride shift. The hydrogen of the adjacent carbon switches positions with that positive, and now you get the positive charge in the middle. So where gets, what gets added to the benzene is the middle carbon rather than the carbon where the chlorine ended up at first. So you would end up getting this added to the benzene like this you would not get one, two, three. You would not get that. You wouldn't get this. So what I'm saying by this, if I say, what, what I'm doing by showing you this is I'm saying in a synthesis problem, do not ever use this reaction where it's just a chlorine or a bromine or some leaving group on a carbon with AlCl3 because most of the time it won't work the way you want it to. Much better is a slight alternative to this reaction. All you have to do is say, okay, I want this carbon to get attached to the, the benzene, so I put a double bond O on it. And with that single double bond O being there, we don't have to worry about that extra rule that I just talked about. This carbon will easily be attached to this, this, uh, this benzene because much in the same way that chlorine pops off and you get a carbocation here. Now you might be thinking, okay, well, this is even worse than the primary carbocation we were looking at before because it's directly on double bond. And charges that are directly on double bonds can't resonate, but at the same time, they can't shift either. So yes, it's a very unstable positive, but it's not going anywhere. And that's the key difference. If that positive is locked in place, then there's only one place where it can be added to on the benzene. And so you would end up getting one, two, three, because I started with uh, this being chlorine, one, two, three. The only difference is, since this carbonyl was here, it's still going to be here at the end. Only the chlorine gets replaced. But there's a nice and easy way to fix this. If we don't want that carbonyl to be there, 
All you have to do is use in the next step ZnHg, so zinc mercury with HCl. And that will remove the carbonyl. Now, this reaction, the zinc mercury with HCl, is particular in what kind of carbonyls it reacts with. It only touches carbonyls that are a single bond away from the benzene ring, which means if I took this structure and said, okay, well, what if it looked like this? Double bond O here, and I put a double bond O over here. Well, what I would get is only this carbonyl and this carbonyl are a single bond away from the benzene, which means when this reacts, this one is gone, this one is gone, but because this carbonyl is two bonds away, it will still be there, okay? So that, those are the general reactions that you should know that involve benzene additions. Now we're gonna look at some more particulars of how these syntheses work. So on your cover sheet from exam one, and most likely on your finals cover sheet, you're gonna be given a list of ortho power directors and meta directors, and they're gonna give you words like activating and deactivating. And for now, I'm just going to say that wherever you see the word activating, that's the same thing as saying an electron donating group. And wherever you see deactivating, that's the same thing as saying an electron withdrawing group, something that pulls electrons out. And now, one of the most common mistakes that I see on these benzene theme synthesis questions is how do things direct and what is doing the directing? So before when I was showing you the general reaction with benzene, we said if there's nothing on the benzene, there's nothing to direct. So when I do Br2, Fe, Br3, that bromine can get added to any of these carbons because technically it's the same thing. So let's say I added that bromine to this bottom right carbon over here. The second there's something on the benzene, that is when it matters where something goes, meaning in my next step, if I have another Br2, Fe, Br3 happening, now I have to say, okay, not every carbon is the same. I have something on the benzene, so something has to change. So I'm doing the same reaction. I'm going to add a bromine, but where do I add? That is when you go to this list. Now, actually, you know what? I'm gonna make this Cl2, Fe, Cl3 so we can tell them the two spots apart. So Cl2, Fe, Cl3. So I'm adding a chlorine. I go to my list and I see, well, chlorine, bromine, iodine, my halogens are weak electron withdrawing groups, and they're under the chart that says they direct ortho para, which means the thing that is added will be added ortho or para. Now, who is telling me that? The thing already on the benzene, the bromine, not what is over the arrow. The thing over the arrow is not what tells you which position that thing gets added to. It's what's already on the benzene. So bromine being an ortho para director means I would either add here, here, or here. A single bond away on the benzene, that is the ortho position. And then one, two, three, four, the one, four position is the para position. Now if you ever have both the ortho or th and the para positions available, you always add to the para position first because it is the more stable position of the two. By having the two groups further apart, there's less steric hindrance than having them right next to each other where they could bump into each other. And so the final product of this, step of this set of reactions would be bromine in the bottom right corner and chlorine being added four carbons away on the benzene. Okay? So it was the bromine that did the directing. Let's see another example. Let's put an OH here. Um, well, we'll erase this. We'll erase this. We'll keep the benzenes around because that's not going to change. And you'll never have to synthesize benzene. It's too many steps, it's too weird, and we never really thought it, so don't worry about it. Let's say we're starting off with a benzene ring that has an OH right up top there. Okay, and that means that OH will be up top there the rest of the way through. Now, let's say I'm going to add, use one of those reactions now. Let's say I am going to add an acyl chlor, or I'm going to add the carbonyl with the Cl and then three carbons, okay? Well, OH is, I go to my list, I have two situations where I have oxygen. I have OCH3 and OH where it's a single bond O and then I have double bond O over here. Double bond O is a meta director. OH is a ortho para director. So am I looking at this double bond O or am I looking at the OH? Again, it's the thing on the benzene that tells you where the thing over the arrow is going. 
So OH being an ortho parent director, well, here is my parent position, here are my ortho positions. My ortho position, I'm sorry, my parent position, I always add two first, and that's where this will get added. The chlorine comes off, the double bond O stays, and then I have one, two, three carbons. Okay? Now, I would have this. So that'll stick around, but now, let's say I put one more thing over the arrow. Let's say I now do Br2, FeBr3. So now I have three, th uh, now I have uh, a new reaction over the arrow, and I have two things on the benzene, whereas here I only have one. So I have two different things I have to think about who is doing the directing. Well, the strongest donating group will always direct. And if you have one donating group and one withdrawing group, the donating group, no matter how weak it may be, will always win. So even a CH3, as weak as it is, will direct over a super strong electron withdrawing group. In this case, I have an OH and I have a double bond O. A good donating group versus a good withdrawing group. The donating group still wins, though. So if I add Br2, F, and Br3, I'm going to direct to the ortho position either here or here. Now it turns out, by looking at this, even though this OH is directing ortho para, well again, if the para position is blocked because there's something already there, we can't add there, so now it's going to add ortho. But as it turns out, the ortho position to the OH is also the meta position to the, car the carbonyl carbon. So both of these are actually directing to the same spot, it turns out. So this one or this one, you'd end up getting the same thing. So I'm just going to say I chose the right. And so the bromine would get added there. But the one who's truly doing the directing is the OH. He's kind of technically helping along because he directs meta, but it's the OH who tells you where the thing is going to get added. Okay. Now let's talk about one that's a little particular. If I have a benzene ring, and on that ring I have O, carbon, carbon, double bond O, that, and I do Br2, would that be Br3? How is this going to add? Because, well, I see I have single bond O, but I also have double bond O in the same directing group, so who's winning? You should always only look a single bond away. Cover up that double bond O, because he's too far away. It's the single bonded oxygen that matters. That single bonded oxygen is an electron donating group, because he's resonating into the benzene which means it's going to be an ortho para director. And again, if the para position is open, you go to there first. So the product of this would be the ester is the same. And now on the benzene, I have added the bromine to the para position. Now what if I change this slightly? What if I said, Now it's double bond O, and then the oxygen's over there. Well, in this case, I again only look at the thing that's a single bond away. I have a double bond O, a single bond away from the benzene. And double bond O is a withdrawing group, which means when I draw this in, the bromine, because the double bond O is a withdrawing group and a meta director, would be added either here or here, the meta position. Okay, so that's the key difference between an ester, uh, how an ester can look differently. And if these were nitrogens, if this was a nitrogen, for example, an amide, well, everything I just explained would follow the same set of rules, or this would follow the exact same rules that I just explained. If the nitrogen is single bonded to the benzene, well, nitrogens are typically strong donating groups, although the amide makes it less strong, it's still a donating group, which means it would direct ortho para. But if it's the double bond O that's directly attached, then it's a withdrawing group, and it directs meta. Now let's get into some practice problems so we can see how these syntheses actually work.